If you were going on your merry day filming a late night show, only to find yourself locked in an active contagion, think you'd survive? This original Spanish horror is far more terrifying than its Hollywood remake, because if you thought you wouldn't survive quarantine in our last video, Wreck is more brutal, with less margin for error, and a vengeful demon that can't be stopped. This is why you wouldn't survive Wreck. Angela's a happy-go-lucky late-night reporter. She's charming, fun, and has no idea she's about to have the worst night of her life. Together with her unexpected cameraman, they're filming a segment for a show about the local firefighters. They tour around the station, getting to know the friendly firemen waiting for some action. Lucky for them, it looks like they'll get some good footage, as the siren goes off and they all jump into a fire truck driving through Barcelona to get to the apartment complex the call came from. Turns out, an old lady was heard screaming. A cop leads the crew upstairs to enter the old lady's room, Miss Cachita. When they get in, they find her standing at the end of a hallway, covered in blood. Hold on, something's definitely wrong here. If you're a reporter just looking for some usable footage, this is enough to pack it up and go home. But then again, this is good TV, and understandably, they keep filming. It's what I would do. Except, when the cameraman turns the camera's light onto the old lady to get a better shot, she reacts violently to the light. The older cop tries to help her, but she suddenly lunges and attacks him, biting into his neck. The rest of the men try their best to pry her off, and it takes three guys to tear her mouth away from the cop's neck. Okay, now it's time to get the hell out of the building. Many fire department calls are for medical emergencies, so they've seen a lot of weird things. But this is an unfit old woman, and she nearly overpowers four men. After this, you're not sticking around. You've got a nice life as a cute TV host. You don't need this. Being alert and acting first in these survival scenarios is the single biggest factor to keeping you alive. But it's about to get much worse. They try to get out and go for the doors, but they discover that someone has locked them in from the outside. If you're claustrophobic like me, this is when I'd start to lose it. It's time to start thinking about what you have to help you escape. The firefighters brought in tools specifically for busting on doors, so it's possible. And we don't know if the building is surrounded. I'd be looking for backdoor exits, using the sledgehammer to plow through any locked doors standing in the way. If I needed to convince others to help, we have an injured man who needs a hospital. It's not time to trust the system. It's time to get the hell out. Manu finds out that behind a shutter is a textile workshop and tries to open it up but they're interrupted by Carmen, who's just found out from her husband that the police have blocked off the entire street. Out of nowhere, a guy smashes into the ground. It's Alex. He's wounded really badly. It's a miracle he's still alive. The cop hears someone screaming upstairs and goes with Manu to find out the source of the noise. Angela follows them up, and it's always a good idea to find out what's going on, but I'm not willing to go up there to get it, because it's way too scary and I don't want to die. Escape is looking less likely, so it's time to get information, but don't do the dirty work. Let them go risk their lives to contain the situation while I call the local news. She's a TV presenter, so the call won't be ignored, and getting cameras on the outside will make sure the military play by the rules. Carefully, they make their way into one of the units when a woman comes running at them. She crashes into a wall, screaming her head off before falling to the ground. The cop joins them shortly after and gets into a face-off with the crazy lady from earlier. She rushes at him and doesn't last five seconds before being put down. It's a moment that everyone has to take in. The cop trying to rationalize to himself that he had no other choice, and Angela can't believe what she's just seen. Which was what exactly? They left two bodies on the floor with the door wide open. This is a huge mistake that they will pay for later. If you know you're trapped, contain the virus by any means necessary. Make sure they're dead and quarantine all infected bodies, including anyone bitten. Every precaution taken could save your life, but in shock and panic, nobody's making these connections and neither would I. Downstairs, the shutter to the textile workshop is finally opened, and Manu goes in to check if there are any other exits. He quickly finds a door, but it's been blocked from the outside, taped over, and covered with tarp. Okay, it's starting to look pretty clear that they won't let us out. Am I still going to try? Absolutely. I would ask the tenants of the building if they knew any other way out. Emergency exits, garbage chutes, sewer drains, anything that could be used to escape. No exit hole is too dirty for me. A resident who looks like a sweatier Cheech Marin mentions that all phone calls, TV signals, and radio waves are being jammed from getting in or out of the apartment. Also, Carmen's daughter is burning up pretty badly, and even the medical assistant is getting worried. He proposes they escape from the office window. He gave the superintendent a copy of the keys, which he finds in a small booth. Small note, if you're going to break glass, don't use any of your limbs to do it. There's a high chance that you're going to cut yourself on the broken shards. Instead, Ask the fireman for a window punch, or throw a heavy object. The group enters the office and follow the assistant to the windows where they see a whole squad of soldiers waiting. 
all of them geared up, preparing to seal off the building. The cop enters the room, and getting tired of being pushed around, he takes his gun out and orders everyone to go downstairs. Just as another announcement repeats, that everyone follows the cop's instructions, and no one tries to leave. It might look hopeless, but not yet. The only reason you're trapped is because the contagion is trapped. It's selfish, but by breaking all the windows in the building, the quarantine zone just got a lot bigger. And while the military scrambles to contain it, you might be able to slip out. That is, if the cops don't shoot you dead in the process. At 2 a.m., Angela then interviews the sick little girl named Jennifer, who is constantly being interrupted. The girl mentions that her dog, Max, was taken to the vet because he suddenly got very sick. There's a lot of sickness going on with this family. And with all this talk of infections, this is enough to raise an eyebrow. But what would I actually do? Lock a little girl up in a room? We should, but it just seems mean. So it's easy to imagine I would take the humane approach here, only for it to bite me in the neck later. Carmen is interviewed next. She figures there has to be a connection to all of this. The injuries to the men, the old woman's violent rage, the lockdown, all of it is connected. And when she gets out, she's going to tell the newspapers all about it. But what exactly would she tell them? That the CDC did their job and contained the deadliest infection they've ever seen? I mean, for a minute, let's imagine we were on the outside instead. Are you letting anyone out of the building? Hell no. Not until the situation is completely under control and we know what it is, how to contain it, or if enough time passes until the problem takes care of itself. Everyone regroups in the fabric workshop where the cop tells them the doctor is on his way, taking blood samples from everyone inside, and if the tests are negative, they can all leave the building. Manu takes a head count, asking for the unit number of each tenant to know which apartments are vacant and which are not. An argument breaks out because Carmen has what I would call a Karen moment. She accuses the Asian woman's father of being the source of the infection, but Manu then points out that her child is also sick, and her rebuttal is pure gold. She's only got tonsillitis. Now here we have a great case of groupthink. Instead of investigating these claims of infection any further, they're immediately squashed. Cooler heads prevail, but in this case, they also get bitten. I guarantee you'd find me right there in the mix telling everyone to work together, not realizing it's the worst idea in the building. The health officer unlocks the door to the building and the cop welcomes him in. But Angela notices that all the officials on the outside are wearing masks and hazmat suits and they're telling them that everything is fine? They decide to spy on the health officer from another room. Peeking through their camera, Pablo is able to see the officer handcuffing the fireman. He clearly expects him to be a threat and the implications of this terrifies them both. The doctor injects something into the fireman and orders the cop to handcuff the other injured man. Suddenly, he's attacked and they all scramble to escape the infected, but they don't react in time to stop the medical assistant from being savaged. Pablo and Angela run to join the cop, Manu and the doctor, shutting the medical assistant inside. Angela urges him to open the door, but he refuses, telling them the assistant might have been bitten and the infection spreads through saliva. Finally, someone here is thinking straight, but it's a brutal decision. The emotional stress of ending someone's life must be overwhelming. I hate to say it, but in real life, I'm probably letting him through the door and quickly closing it. I'm just not emotionally equipped to kill a man begging for his life. Suddenly, the assistant slams into the glass pane of the door. Once they close the shutter behind them, that's when Jennifer spews out blood all over her mom's face, jumps out of her arms, and runs upstairs. Carmen is then grabbed and cuffed to the stairwell where she wails for her daughter. Well, that's one problem taken care of. She won't be able to hurt anyone when she turns. They could have contained this by handcuffing Mrs. Conchita in the first bitten cop. But hindsight is 2020, and they had no reason to suspect this. And even still, it might not guarantee safety. Caught in the moment with no information, I'm not going to survive this. The doctor hands Manu a syringe and tells him to fix this. Okay, at this point, there is zero doubt that your life is in danger now, and you need something to protect yourself pronto. Ironically, the only way to get a weapon to protect yourself is to go upstairs straight into danger. But even if you're looking for a weapon, this building doesn't seem to have any good options. At best, you might find the other cop's gun, the sledgehammer Manu brought, the cop's nightstick, and at worst, you'd find a broom, fire extinguishers, and clothes irons. Like I said, not great choices. If I were her, I'd use my God-given female gifts of persuasion and make sure I'm protected. If it's between survival and dignity, I'm going with survival. Entering the room where the old lady was shot, Manu and the cop are shocked to find that her body and that of the girls is missing. But they hear the sound of someone crying and check out the room to find Jennifer has somehow gone behind them. The cop cautiously approaches her 
needle in hand, and reaches out. Can you guess what happens next? This is really foolish. Everyone here should know what the infected will do if you get too close. The best course of action is to knock her out or restrain her before using the sedative, but she's just a child. If you think I'd instinctively karate kick her to the floor, it might take me a minute to mentally get there. Realizing that he's been infected, the cop picks up Jennifer and drags her into another room, giving Pablo and Manu the time to run away only to come face to face with the older lady from earlier, angry and bloodier than ever. She gets wasted by Manu, who whacks her to death with his sledgehammer. <laughs> I'm starting to think the sledgehammer is the way to go here. I'd suggest we all pull our money and hire this guy to take it all the infected with it. He's supposed to be a rescuer, right? The men run downstairs, but everyone else is running up, all warning them not to go down. The infected have managed to force the shutter doors open, but Angela and the men are able to shut it just in time. Carbon grabs the doctor on his way up and demands he set her free, but he can't. The keys to the handcuffs are with the cop who is still upstairs. This poor woman just cannot catch a break. At what point does it become okay to suggest we sledgehammer her free? If it doesn't break the chain, it will certainly break her bones enough to slip through the cuffs. Unfortunately, the fireman left the sledgehammer upstairs. Is he crazy? I would be clinging to that thing like a baby. Angela tries to free Carmen from the cuffs, but Manu drags her away before she can get herself infected and leaves Carmen to her fate. They run away and hide in one of the rooms upstairs, locking the door behind them. Manu does a quick head count and asks if anyone has been bitten. Can you guess what they say? Once again, nobody should be trusted here, and there's no way to prove infection because all it takes is saliva. At this point, they're just as much a danger to each other as what's out there. But Caesar disagrees, thinking the government will come rescue them because the doctor is still here. Manu stomps out to the other room, intending to confront the doctor, but finds out he's been infected. The doctor decides to do at least one heroic thing before he turns and locks himself in a side room. They're trapped here, or are they? Caesar remembers that there's a basement storeroom that leads to a drain cover. They can go into the sewers and come out the other side, but there's a reinforced door, one that can only be unlocked by a key the assistant left in his apartment. Suddenly, the infected doctor grabs Caesar as Manu and Angela split, leaving him behind. Lesson to learn here? Environmental awareness saves lives. If I know there's only a thin door between me and the infected, you'd best believe I'm on the other end of the room with my eyes glued to the door. Their only option is to grab the assistant's keys. They could go to the entrance room, but they don't remember where it is. Now, if they were less panicked, they might realize they already have this information on camera. Rewinding the tape to the head count from earlier would help them, but when you're running for your life, there's no time to watch your footage. There are no good options here. Mad scrambling is the only path forward. Thinking on her feet, Angela realizes they can find out where the intern lives by checking the mailboxes. Carefully weaving around the now-infected Carmen, they make their way back upstairs where Angela is almost bitten by one of the infected. But Manu and Pablo are able to save her life by choking the infected to death. Continuing their way up, all the lights in the stairwell spontaneously go out, forcing Pablo to use his camera spotlight and gets jumped by the Asian woman who throws herself at him. Angela is able to rip her off of Pablo, and Manu decides to stay behind to take care of the situation while Angela runs upstairs, where they try to find the keys. Angela is ripping open drawers, going over tables, and finding nothing. They need to take a deep breath and really think about where to look. Checking random cupboards full of dishes and stomping around the flat is going to alert the infected to their location. They need to refocus, be stealthy, and be critical about this. Of course, I say that, but this is me before I go to work every Monday. It's starting to feel hopeless until they finally find a desk with a keyring in it. Score! They just might make it out of here. They leave the flat and quickly find their momentary hope butchered. The way down is blocked as the infected are on almost every floor below them. They run upstairs to the top floor and manage to unlock one of the rooms, shutting the door and locking it again behind them. Inside, it's pitch black and Pablo fidgets with his camera and turns on the light. The room is filled with beakers, rosaries, and all the hallmarks of being regged by a cultist, or more likely, a priest. On the wall, Angela sees a poster about the Vatican investigating the demonic possession of a girl named Tristana Mideros. She had been kept at a hospital, but mysteriously disappeared one day. Angela and Pablo go deeper into the flat, seeing more religious iconography, but more importantly, information about this possessed girl. They listen to and play back a tape recorder and learn that the renter was looking for a cure to the infection, but it's highly resistant. The man on the tape concludes that he must destroy the Mideros girl and any other source of this virus. The attic door suddenly swings open and Pablo decides to check it out using his camera in case there's an exit, but suddenly knocks the camera aside, plunging the room into darkness. 
Pablo turns on the night vision and has Angela hold on to him as he tries to find his way out. But they're not alone. In the distance, a person is standing and walking over towards them. They hide from this thing and observe its movements. It's a woman wielding a hammer who can't hear or see them. That is Tristano Maderos, the missing girl from the clippings. That means the origins of the virus are demonic. Science won't help you, no injection can stop it, you probably left your rosary beads at home, and I haven't been to church in five years. There's no way in hell we're going to survive this. They wait until she's distracted before creeping their way past her, but someone accidentally knocks something over. Pablo has Angelo run away as he stays behind to distract the woman and ends up sacrificing his life, leaving Angela all alone as she stumbles in the dark, desperately trying to find the camera. Even though she's panicking and hyperventilating, she's able to pick it up and scan the room for Pablo, only to find him being eaten by the woman. Angela freaks out seeing this and gets savaged by the woman who knocks her to the ground. Injured, dazed, and terrified, Angela slowly creeps her way forward to the camera only to get dragged away into the darkness. But what do you think? What else can be done? How well do you think you could survive this situation? Let me know with a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to get updated on my latest videos. And if you want more right now, you can check out the playlist that's already up on the channel where I've covered why you wouldn't survive zombies, slavers, cannibals, and corporate death games. Until next time, have a damn good day.